In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at what are called measures of spread. And this particular uh, video was made in support of uh, a lesson in a, a course called Data Management um, in the province of Ontario, Canada. It's a grade 12 uh, uh, statistics and probability course. And specifically, these two formulas come from a textbook made for that course by the publisher McGraw-Hill Ryerson. I actually haven't seen, well, I actually seen the top one, but not the bottom one before. And they use this, these formulas in a little different way than I have seen previously to calculate percentiles. I have seen other ways to calculate it. And so uh, I'm going to go through how these two formulas work and talk a little bit more about the results they give after this bottom example. Uh, R stands for, or is called the percentile rank. Uh, P is the percentile, so it's whether it's like the 25th percentile or 80th percentile, and then is the population size. And it says if R is in the whole number, always round down, and I'll, I'll talk about that in the example. And this one here, the second formula, is used if you're given a specific number in your data set to determine what percentile that number is. So L is the number of numbers, data points below that number, and E is the number equal to it, and again, N is the population size. So in this example, it says the heights of 18 students are given below. We're asked to find the 25th percentile, and what percentile is the 170 centimeter height. Now notice that these are not in order, so you need to order them. So there's the list in order, smallest number is 153, highest number is 183. And so if we want to calculate the 20, 25th percentile, we need this formula. So I'm going to write that down there. Now we're doing the 25th percentile, so, so P would be 25. And you can count them or notice the heights of 18 students, so N would be 18. So putting 25 and 18 in place of P and N, that's the calculation we get. And so basically it's 25 divided by 100 times 19. And so that's the calculation and it gives us 4.75. Now this says if R isn't a whole number, always round down. If this was a whole number, let's say that was 7, for example, then we would just look at the 7th number. And we count along here and the 7th number would be that percentile. But it's not. So what the 4.75 means is you're supposed to take the fourth number and the next one, which would be the fifth number, and average them. So if we count 1, 2, 3, the fourth number from the bottom is 159, and 163 is the next number, the fifth one. So we average the two of them. So add them up, divide by 2, and we get 161. So that's the 25th percentile, 161. In B, it says, what percentile is the 170 centimeter height? So that's the second formula. So in the formula, L is the number of data points below 170. So we can count them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And the E is the number equal to. So the notice there's 370. So we're going to put 3 in there. And so this is the calculation. 100 times 7 plus 0.5 times 3 and then divided by 18. And we get 47.22. So that would mean that the 170 centimeter height is the 47th percentile. Now, notice that the 170s are in the middle here. So we would assume that the 170s should be around the median, around the 50th percentile. And after I did these two calculations, I decided to check them using a different method. And so I'm going to flip over to the next page. And so I'm using here an, an, an application called GeoGebra. And I typed in all those numbers. I typed them in an order, but it really doesn't matter if they're in order to use this. Although it's kind of nice as a check. that You can actually see them and, and uh, figure out where the, all the quartiles and the median are. So 153, 55, 56. You can actually go back 153, 55. You can actually go back and check if you want. Uh, 180, 82, 83. I did type in all the correct numbers. They are correct. Now, in order to find the median, there are 18 numbers. And this is a different method than using the formula. There are 18 numbers. And we divide that by 2 to get the middle. So that gives us 9. Now, if there's an even number of numbers, there's 18 of them, then this actually means that the 9th and 10th are the middle numbers. So the 9th number is 170, and the 10th number is 170. And, of course, if you average 170 and 170, you get 170. So that's the median. And so I'm going to bring an arrow in here just to point to the very middle. So 
being between the ninth and tenth, breaks it into the bottom nine numbers and the top nine numbers. So if I'm going to figure out the quartiles, the bottom quartile, for example, if there's nine numbers here, if you add nine and one, you get ten, divided by two is five. So the fifth number, this 163, should be the lower quartile, the 25th percentile. You see there's nine numbers here. If you look at that one, there's one, two, three below it, and there's one, two, oh, sorry, one, two, three, four below it, and one, two, three, four above it that are still below the median. So that is the middle number of the bottom nine numbers. That's not what I got on the previous page. We remember it was 161. So this is actually agreeing with what GeoGebra gives me, a, a lower quartile of 163. Now pretty close, 161, 163, not much different. Okay, but those formulas on the previous page don't always produce the same results as this application is going to. So I've got the uh, median and the lower quartile. Now let's do the upper quartile. So uh, again, there's nine numbers above here. So nine and one is ten divided by two is five. So it's the fifth number of these top number top nine numbers, and so that's 175. So again, you can see one, two, three. There's four below it of the top nine, and one, two, three, four above it of the top nine. So that's certainly the uh, uh, the upper quartile, 175. And uh, if we use that formula from the previous page. Uh, to find the upper quartile, the one I just found. Uh, we would go 75 over 100 times 18 plus 1. There's 18 numbers. So the 14 again would mean we average the 14th and 15th numbers. So we would be averaging the 175 and 178, which isn't going to give us 175. Okay, so it would be, I can actually just do it here, just to demonstrate, 176.5, so a slightly different answer. So those formulas aren't producing exactly the same results. Now, I thought, well, they're different, so let's try something else. And and this is the two screenshots from my graphic calculator. And notice uh, minimum quartile, median, upper quartile, max. Those numbers are exactly the same thing that Joe produced. So the formulas in the previous page do sometimes give the exactly the same results, but not always. Okay, so they are close, of course. So, uh, a bit about quartiles. Uh, Q1, or is the another name for the 25th percentile, the first quartile. When the data is ordered, uh, it's the middle number between the lowest data point and the median. The Q2, or the median, is the 50th percentile, and that's the middle number when the data is put in order. Q3, or the 75th percentile, uh, when the data is ordered, it's the middle number between the median and the highest data point. And again, they always have to be ordered for all this. The uh, interquartile range, abbreviation IQR, is the range of values between Q3 and Q1. It's the middle 50% of the data. The, uh, the range is the difference between the highest and lowest data points. And this is a definition of an outlier. It's a data point that's more than 1.5 times the interquartile range, either below the first quartile or above the, third, the uh, third or upper quartile. So that's the definition of the interquartile range. Now this is the uh, uh, plot from the last page, and this is called a box and whiskers plot. Uh, some people don't bother put these these lines on the end. It kind of looks like the face of a cattle, but that's the whiskers. You see, here's the face, and this is a whisker going out on this side and on this side. Uh, I put on here the uh, data points: the 153, 63, 70, 75, and 183. If you remember from the previous page, that's those numbers right there. So this is a box and whiskers plot, and it's a it's a neat way to illustrate the data. The um, uh, the box actually holds 50% of the data because the interquartile range is the difference between the 163 here and the 175 here. And so if you calculate that, 
uh, you get 12. So there's a difference of 12 centimeters between here and here, which contains the middle 50% of the data. This vertical line here is where the median is. So half the data is below that, half the data is above that. Minimum point is the bottom of the whisker here. Maximum point is the top of the whisker here. And the range, of course, is the difference between the minimum and the maximum, which in this case would be 30 centimeters. So that's a box and whiskers plot. You do need to scale at the bottom. And one of the nice things about box and whiskers plots is it's a good way to compare two different sets of data because you can just put them both on the same scale and easily see the differences and similarities between them. And uh, one more example here, this is with group data. Um, example two, the, uh, the arm spans for a basketball team are given in the table below. And you're asked to determine, well, all the same statistics, uh, Q1, the median, Q3, range, inter interquartile, and then draw a box and whiskers plot. And this is group data. So the arm spans go from, one, well, the 160s, the 170s, 180s, up to uh, between 200 and, well, 209.9. And these are the frequencies, so there's two numbers in this, four numbers in this, seven numbers in this, etc. So the cumulative frequencies is all the frequencies from that interval and below. So the uh, we're going to put a, we're just bring the frequency of two over here because there's nothing else below that interval. This interval here, see there is two in the one below and there's four in this one, so the cumulative frequency for the 170s would be six, because there's four in that one and two below, four and two add to six. For the 180s, there's six below it and seven in this one, so there'd be 13 in from this one and below. Uh, 13 and five is 18, so that, that 18 means that there are 18 numbers in this interval and below it, and then we add one more to get the uh, cumulative frequency for the top. So uh, that also tells us that n is 19, there's 19 numbers. So, in order to determine the median, uh, there's 19 numbers, and there's an odd number of them. So if you add 1 to get 20 and divide that by 2, the tenth number is going to be the median. Okay, so that's the middle number. Now, a nice thing about having the cumulative frequencies here is we can see where that tenth number is. You see, 10 is between 6 and 13. So there's, there's six numbers in this interval and below, but we want the tenth one. So we have to go into the next interval. And so you're looking, see, because 10 is between 6 and 13, that means we're in this middle interval. And so the uh, median, and we use the midpoints in the intervals. So the midpoint between here and, and well, the mid middle of the 180s is 185. So that's why we'd say the uh, median is 185. Now, some people might be really technical and say, well, why don't you go zero subtracted from 9.9 .9, divide by two. And, you know, if you really want to be technical, you'd actually divide 9.9 .9, by 2, so it should be 184.95, so I'm just rounding to the nearest whole number, and so we get 185 here. So that's the median. So to get the uh, the lower quartile, uh, if there's uh, the tenth number is the middle one, then there's 9 below it, and so the uh, the fifth number would be the lower quartile. Well, where's the fifth number? There's only two in the first category, and so there's four more in the middle one. So between five is between two and six, so we're looking in this category, and so that's why the lower quartile, or the 25th percentile, would be 175. 175 being the middle of this interval. Well, where's Q3? Q3 is the 15th number, because if there's the 10th number is the middle one, there's nine above that, so the 15th would be the, th the third quartile, or the 75th percentile. Where is that? Well, 15 is, uh, see, the up to 13 up to here, so 15 is between 13 and 18. And so we'd be looking in this interval, so the middle of that one would be 195. So that's the third quartile. The range would be the difference between the, the middle of this, 205, and the middle of this one, 165. So that's 40. So it's a difference of 40 between the middle of this interval and the middle of that one. And the interquartile range is the difference between the 195 and 175, which would be 20. So to draw this, the uh, we put the box in the middle here. So the lower part of the box is at 175 here. Q3 is 195, so we put at 195 here. The uh, median was 185, so 185 would be right there. 
And the lowest data point would be uh, 165, the bottom, the middle of the bottom interval. So our whisker here would extend down to 165, and the middle of this interval is at 210, sorry, 205, the middle of the interval. So we go from here up to that. So that's what the box and whisker plot would look like. Now, just to go back to those formulas, I don't want you to leave leave you with uh, the impression that those two formulas from the first page never work, because they actually do in this case. So <clears throat> um, we've got, remember, we've got 19 numbers. So if I'm going to do the 25th percentile, 25 divided by 100 times 19 plus 1, okay, that gives me 5, okay. So the uh, lower quartile is the fifth number, so that does produce the 175. Let's do the uh, median. We put 50 in here for the median. So it's telling me it's the tenth number. Tenth number is median, 185. So 75 here. It's telling me the fifteenth number. Q3 is the fifteenth number. We get 195 again. So those formulas actually do produce for the three the uh, three quartiles um, exactly the same values in this case. So that is how you do this with group data. And that's the end of the video.